male novelists of 1900 to 1950. Like, that's, that was my, like, and so there were all these books that I loved so much, but they, they, I didn't realize until later how kind of alienating they were in the sense of thinking about your own career as a writer. Um, and so it was when I was much older and I started reading books um, that, yeah, I felt like they sort of give you a kind of permission or just like expand your notion of what is possible in literature. So I'm going to name five books. Um, so for the first three um, were books that kind of, that I started, that I read right before I started writing. Um, and I was like, oh, you can have children in books and the children can do things. Um, and so one is a book called Afterbirth uh, by Alyssa Albert. And it's a, a first person, very kind of like accurate narration, um, a woman who has a one year old. Uh, and and it just kind of narrates that experience, but it's a novel. And I was like, oh, you can, that's a thing, you can do that. Um, the second was The Last Samurai by Helen DeWitt, which is a really wonderful novel. Um, where there's a mother and a child, and they affect one another's lives, and you know the child is not just like a prop in the book and has um, his own agency. Uh, and then the third was about California, and so uh, it's a novel that came out a few years ago, and I don't think it got as like I don't think enough people have read it. Um, it's called Off Course um, by Michelle Hunnevin, and it's about the Eastern Sierra. Um, further south, but it was a part of California I'd never seen described in fiction, and one that was very kind of recognizable to me in that way, and I guess like, people can write about um, like, great novels about places that are not like San Francisco or Los Angeles. Um, so those like thematically were important. And then as I was writing, um, the novel is, like, is very voice driven, and there were two books that I think influenced me a lot, although I didn't really sort of realize until I was like halfway through. Um, and the first is How Stella Got Her Group Back by Terry McMillan, which is like incredibly voice driven. And I didn't realize how much like, uh, there, a lot of people will note in the book that there's some stream of consciousness moments and like, um, like commas are disposed of at certain <laughs> points. Um, and I was rereading that book, which I read like a bunch of times when I was in high school. Uh, and it's like, oh, this is like so, that the voice like was very influential. Um, and the other book is, Mating by Norman Rush, um, and I remember reading it and thinking it was so weird that a man had written this woman's voice in the first person, <clears throat> and so and she's like a very kind of particular, like interesting, like just weird person, and felt very fully realized, and, and that was also um, influenced a lot. That's great. That's great. So, what would you say now to to the aspiring writers? That now that you've gone through the process of writing one or more of, of books, you know, what what is your, like, what is the piece of advice you wish you got, you know? And then what would you say to, uh, do you have different advice for, for writers who are parents? Well, I think this, holds true for, for any writer, but um, make the most of the time that you do have. Yeah. And uh, I think it was um, Lady Smith who said, I've become a lot less particular about what kind of pen I have to use while writing. <laughs> like, you just, you know, you have, you're keeping another creature or two alive, and so that they're kind of your first responsibility, but um, so, so for me, this is sort of a quick revision tip. Um, I will, in fact, I was grinding Bart on the way here, and I have some short stories I'm working on, and I loaded them up into this PDF to voice app, and I was listening to it on the Bart train. And so that's how I, I kind of do, I also read the stories aloud, but they're a way of sort of like filling in that time when you're commuting or going for run or something like that. Um, I mean, that's sort of a very practical tip, but I think that's sort of a broader tip, and again, this is for emerging or established writers, is to uh, find your tribe, get involved in the literary community, whether it's coming out to a conference, a festival like this, volunteering for a conference like this, subscribing to a literary magazine, uh, supporting your local independent bookstore. Um, and I mean, because writing is such a solitary act, and when you find people that you, you know, 
the, you can find your tribe to help commiserate you when the times are tough, and when there are those victories, small or large, you can celebrate with them too. And so um, we're so lucky in the Bay Area to have such a, a rich literary community, and I, you know, if any of you in the audience are writers, you know, I highly encourage you to, to come on out. Um, I love that, Zadie Smith. <laughs> I mean, I, I think I would not, um, you know, my daughter's two and a half, the book came out last month, so I've spent the first two years of her life writing this book. Um, and I don't think I would have written a book before I had a kid, to be honest, because, not because I didn't want to, but because I did not make good use of my time. Like, I let my perfectionism, um, for spend too much time on insignificant things. And I think there was something about having a kid and just not having all the time in the world. It's like, I have four hours and I have to make use of that. And it's not gonna be perfect, but I just have to do what I can with that time. It allowed me to work through a lot of that perfectionism and just get stuff on the page. Um, so I would say that. Um, and then also, for people, for those of you who are writers, it sounds so weird, but it's, I wish someone had told me this 20 years ago. Don't forget to stretch and take care of your body. Yes. Um, I'm dealing with like significant chronic pain because I only, you know, because I, I pay, paid attention to ergonomic set up a little bit too late um, or, you know, uh, more recently than, than I probably should have. And I think I'm just now getting really serious about like, okay, I just sat down for two hours. I have to go take a walk or I have, I'm going to stretch my body really well. So I think it can sound really silly and significant, but it's a big, you know, we're sitting like this all the time, getting into a counter pose that is, that's good for your body is incredibly important. Can I just add to that? Of course. Uh, don't they say that sitting is the new smoking? Yes. <laughs> so yes. If you, you do need to get your body in motion. And I, I wanted to add that actually it's when I, I'm away from my computer and then I'm on that run or swimming or whatever when that thing I couldn't figure out suddenly comes to me. Sat up straight. <laughs> <laughs> I used to just like work my my desk is the couch and it's just destroyed my upper back and lower back. Um, I too don't think I would have written a book um, had I not had my daughter. It would have taken me a lot longer um, for the time reasons and also just it like reformatted all of my priorities so significantly that it helped me see like oh I it's more hard for me to do this thing than it is. Um, I, this is going to sound, I don't know what it sounds like, but I honestly think that um, advocating for universal childcare is like the best thing that writers can do um, for themselves and for other people because writing is hard enough um, economically and if you have children that's just like, you can write with a child next to you but it's very, very hard. Um, so paying someone to care for my children has been very good. So they go to daycare and preschool, but that's like more than our rent. Um, so I, if we get universal child care, I will probably not benefit from it, but I still like want it so bad for everybody. And um, it's one thing that would like make a material difference for all parents' lives. I, think. Yeah. Or, I mean, so often um, there are different fellowships in, for literary stuff and to women, like winner after women, if they're a woman with kids, they say, oh yeah, this is gonna go. The men are like, we're going to travel abroad. Yeah. Right. And then women are like, this will pay for child care. <laughs> That's right. OK, so um, it's that time where um, we have a few minutes uh, for questions. So if anybody has a question.